This is an important part of experimental design. I thought it would be helpful to have a completely separate session on sample size calculation. So over the next 45 minutes or so, I'm just going to talk about methods for calculating sample size to give you a feel for what goes into that. Um, that's just a repeat of one of the slides you've already seen. It's important that your sample size is large enough. So if there's an effect of a size worth knowing about, the study will find it hopefully as statistical, statistically significant and you'll have a good chance of doing that. But uh, what you want to guard against is, as well is having your sample size unnecessarily large. You don't really want to waste time, animals or resources and in particular animals is becoming more important ethically not to, to waste animals and not to have too many, not to have too few either because if you've got a low chance of detecting a result then you're not just wasting a few animals, you've not just done a few too many, you're wasting the whole experiment and all the animals that were used in the experiment. So it's, it's quite an important consideration. And now that it's become part of the, um, there's a study form that needs to be completed in Roslyn whenever a new study involving animals has got to be carried out, we're now asking for more justification of numbers of animals, so it's becoming more important for uh, animal studies particularly. So thinking about what I would say were bad ways to determine sample size, but nevertheless it's still something that people say to me a lot. They've always used this number of mice in the past, you know, that's what they're going to do again. They've got a lot of significant results, so you know, this number of mice can give the result that we want, so why shouldn't we do that again? And you're sort of challenged to try and justify why you should suit the number of animals to the particular experiment. Another argument is everyone uses this number. I can only afford this number. We've got practical restraints on the experiment, so I'm afraid that's all we can do. These are not really good ways to determine your sample size. Before I go into the actual calculations, it's probably worth just getting out of the way, and I said this in the last session, but sample size calculation, there are some situations where it's not actually necessary, well certainly not necessary to do it in the way I'm going to consider, which is to obtain statistical significance, and that's when the objective, main objective of study isn't to get a statistically significant result. It might be to do a pilot study, for example, just check out the procedures for the experiment, um, you might not know how variable the data are, which is an in essential ingredient for sample size calculation. So it might be worthwhile doing a small study just to get a feel for how variable the measurements are. Sometimes studies are done to demonstrate a, a concept. If we do this, can I get an example with this genotype of such and such happening? And that's a, another reason to do a, a study, but you're not seeking to get statistical significance. However, I, I still think it's important to sort of try and justify, particularly in animal studies, how, how many you're using in some way. And it might be that you can do some kind of calculation, for example, to think of probabilities that you might get something happening with different numbers of animals, even if you're not aiming to achieve statistical significance. This is with the new question on the study form about justifying numbers of animals. People have sometimes worried and said, well, I'm not looking at statistical significance. How can I do a power calculation? And in most cases, sometimes it's the case that they don't need to do one. So.